Uh, this is video three for Lobital's rule. Uh, there are some special cases that um, will fit into Lobital's rule, or you can make, uh, you can put it into the f of x over g of x scenario so that you can evaluate the actual limit. Uh, so this one is is a question that they, they, they give you a good example of the infinity minus infinity. So this is one of the four special cases. I'll, I'll make a video for each of the four. Uh, one of the special cases, if you're in a situation where you have infinity minus infinity for a limit, you, you can potentially, hopefully, put it into a scenario where you've got an f of x over g of x and evaluate it using L'Hopital's rule. So they give you an example in your book, and then they ask you, you know, work on this question. Uh, they also have a homework question that's very similar to this one. Uh, it's, it, you just have to do a little bit more work. So we're going to do this one as there's, there's less work involved with it. All right, so first of all, If we evaluate it at zero, this equals one over zero minus one over sine of zero, which is zero, which equals infinity minus infinity. So this is this is the form that we're looking for. All right, so I'm not going to use L'Hopital's yet, but I'm going to use an algebra step. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to combine these things into one fraction because I, I want I want the limit as x approaches 0 of f of x over g of x. So a quotient. We have the difference of two quotients, and that's not going to work. So I'm going to do a little, little bit of algebra. And I can rewrite um, 1 over x as 1, uh, uh, sorry, not 1. I can make a one there. All right, so it'll be sine of x over x times sine of x. Because sine of x over sine of x is 1, I can multiply 1 over x by 1. I will do the same thing with 1 over sine of x. Right, What I'm doing here is trying to get a common denominator. The common denominator will be x times sine of x. So I'm going to multiply the second side or uh, with x over x, so it's going to be x over x sine of x. Now, I have the same denominator. I can do another algebra step and simply subtract the two numerators. So that's the limit as x approaches 0 of sine of x minus, minus x all over x sine of x. Okay, so now if I evaluate this at 0, I get... 0 minus 0 over 0 times 0, which is 0. Um, which is 0 over 0. So now I can use L'Hopital. All right, so I'm going to take the derivative of the numerator. Don't forget your notation. The derivative of sine of x is cosine of x. The derivative of negative x is negative 1. Now, our denominator requires a product rule. So the product rule, we have the first times the derivative of the second, so that's cosine. And I wrote it wrong. Plus the second times the derivative of the first which is just 1. So this is the derivative of our, of our denominator. So we can certainly evaluate this again. So this, when evaluated at 0, is equal to 1 minus 1, because cosine at 0 is 1. 0 times 1, which is 0, plus 0 times 1, which is another 0. So that's 0 over 0. So we're still in a situation where we can use L'Hopital's rule. We haven't found a solution yet. So we're going to do another step. So 
So we take the limit as x approaches 0. The derivative of the numerator is negative sine of x. Derivative of negative 1 is 0, so we don't worry about that. All right, so now we've got a product rule for the first part, similar to what we did before. So this is going to be the first is, uh, is x. Derivative of the second is negative cosine of x plus the second. And I'm not going to rewrite the one, but derivative of x is 1. So this is the derivative of x cosine of x. We still have to take the derivative of sine of x. So that's going to be another cosine. So let's do a little algebra step and clean this up. All right, so what do we have here? We have... I guess I guess I don't need to. Um, I can I can just fill in. I can just I can just enter them in. So I can plug in zero for this. So negative sine of x is zero. Uh, x times cosine of of x when x is zero, we're, we're going to get zero here. Uh, cosine at zero is one. Cosine at zero is also one. So we have zero over two, which is zero. So we have an answer here which is zero and that's kind of kind of what you have to do you have to take the uh two fractions or the two whatever you have and move move them into one 